Let me introduce to you uh, Edward Cargan, journalist and political commentator who joins us from uh, London in order to uh, get his uh, take on the developments in Libya. Edward Corrigan, March 19th, if you remember, that's when the United States uh, launched the first strike. Uh, supposedly, this was going to help uh, the revolutionaries uh, expand and move to the capital, uh, Tripoli. Interestingly, that has not occurred. As a matter of fact, at one point, the revolutionaries themselves were making more advancements uh, prior to the uh, NATO operation. What do you think has happened? Well, I think that, one, Gaddafi has, uh, you know, a, a loyal army and people have appreciated what he has done for them, at least some of the people have, where he's provided uh, the oil resources for free education, free health care, uh, expansion and housing. Uh, he's used the resources of the state, um, you know, not exclusively, but largely for the benefit of, of the Libyan people. And he has also used the resources of the state to help uh, the African Union, help African countries get out of uh, the control of uh, the United States and also the European states. And so I think he does have a, a loyal following, and he, of course, has uh, you know, ex expressed the voice of uh, a lot of, uh, of Arabs, a lot of Libyans, with regard to independence for the Arabs, support for the Palestinians, uh, opposition to American intervention into the Middle East. And, of course, uh, Gaddafi has been very critical of uh, a lot of the uh, the feudal regimes in in the uh, in the Arab world and pointed out the hypocrisy uh, that that's involved in there and he's done other things too like trying to move away from you know uh, using the US dollar the euro for for oil purchases and he's made some other advancements um, with regard to sort of uh, the the bank of the independence of the bank of Libya and using resources in ways that uh, are not in, uh, I guess in the same interests of uh, of a lot of the, the American and Western powers in the World Bank. As a result, he does have a loyal following, but he's also been subjected to tremendous pressure right now in that NATO, which is ostensibly a, a defensive uh, alliance for the North uh -huh. American uh, I'm glad you powers. mentioned pressure. Let me come in here then, Edward Corrigan. Pressure from whom? If we look at the NATO, I mean, what are we looking at? Pretty much looking at the five well, nations, aren't we, who are implementing this well, uh, mandate of the U.N. Security Council. Why is it that it's restricted to these five nations? I mean, uh, at the same time, at least on the surface, uh, it's just them uh, and not uh, countries from uh, Africa. I mean, we're just getting some token uh, actions by, let's say, uh, the United Arab Emirates, I think, that is contributing uh, some warplanes uh, and some small contingents from other countries. So when we talk about uh, pressure, it's just five nations, isn't it? Well, you're talking about the United States, you're talking about Britain, you're talking about France, you're talking about Italy. These are uh, the most you know, powerful military advanced nations in the world, pretty well, certainly in the West. Um, you know, the Russians and the Chinese are certainly up there, and they're not involved. In fact, Putin has been very critical of the attacks. But this is a tremendous amount of power. The CIA has put a lot of money into the, the rebels. Their ostensive leaders live for 20 years in the United States. He's a CIA asset. They've sort of uh, cobbled together... Uh, uh, a mishmash of, of opposition groups. Some of them are former Gaddafi loyalists who are probably acting in, in what they perceive as uh, self-interest. So you've got jihadists, people who are, uh, you know, are Islamic ex extremists, uh, people affiliated with Al Qaeda, which goes against what um, the Americans ostensibly want. And uh, I don't know, haven't, there may even be a few Libyan royalists uh, hanging around there, but they're pretty well extinct, I think. So it, it's it's not a a cohesive movement with a leader. It, it's, uh, was, you know, I don't think it was spontaneous. It was sort of promoted by the, the Americans. In my view, I think they, the Americans were surprised by the uprisings in Tunisia and, and Egypt and, and Bahrain. But I think now they're trying to use that sort of Arab Spring as an opportunity to put pressure and to call for regime change in Libya and also Syria and perhaps even Algeria. These countries have have uh, at least Algeria and Libya have a lot of oil resources, which is of interest to the West. They want to control that. Uh, Libya's banking policy was was clearly posing a threat to some of the major banking interests and, and you know the World Bank and American control of uh, a lot of the financial markets. Right, and, and they, uh, do wanna, they, they do want to they do want to release are, that uh, what is it about thirty billion dollars I believe uh, in which that trip. The trip that he made, uh, this uh, revolutionary uh, leader from the TNC. Uh, let, let, let's look at uh, uh, the way the, uh, I guess you can call them the, the way the sorties are being exercised. 
Uh, it's very interesting. You have CIA operatives, as I'm sure you're well aware, uh, some say MI6 also, uh, that are on the ground there. But we had this NATO airstrike uh, in which I want to ask your reaction to, uh, Edward Corrigan, in which 11 imams uh, were killed. These are, are clerics uh, that, that were reportedly killed in this airstrike. 50 others wounded, five of them in critical uh, condition. Now, aside from uh, obviously uh, this being a consequence of the airstrikes, what was interesting to me is that the TNC, uh, uh, one of the TNC representatives was at a news conference with an imam in which he has uh, said, not the TNC uh, representative, but the imam, that they're going to take revenge for the brothers who died. Now, what I'm curious about is the role that the TNC has within Libya vis-a-vis -vis the relationship that uh, uh, the West has with them. In particular, of course, we can talk about the UK, the US, uh, but countries that recognize Libya, France, Italy, and Qatar to be part of them. I mean, uh, can you explain the dichotomy there, the, the, the way the mechanics are working in their relationship? Well, the, the Americans and the Western powers just want to overthrow Libya, and they don't really care how they do it and who they use to, to sort of uh, cut back the independence. And once they get rid of Gaddafi, then they can manipulate the regime and put in their own people and, and certainly try to uh, uh, bring it under their control. So they've they're quite prepared to work with anybody. But the, the attack that, on the imams, uh, I think, was a, a mistake. I think they really don't know what they're doing. I think they're bombing a lot of people, killing a lot of innocent civilians. In the name, you know, they say that they're going to keep fighting until Gaddafi tops, stops killing civilians. But it's, it's the NATO uh, forces that are doing the bombing, using drones, providing the, the weapons. And, and I don't really think they care about people in Libya being killed or these imams. This is, you know, just a... Uh, for them, it's collateral damage, but it's 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 going to obviously inflame opinion and polarize a, a large portion of the Muslim population against the NATO intervention. And I think most Libyans realize that this is not in Libya's interest; it's in the interests of the West. So they want to get rid of Gaddafi. They want to put in a puppet. They want to establish a a client regime. You know, so the internal dynamics I think are simply opportunism. Um, and the Americans in the past have used Al Qaeda and have you know against the Russians. They used uh, Al Qaeda. In fact, the Americans helped create Al Qaeda, and the MI6 and the CIA were involved with training it, providing it with weapons. Mm -hmm. They used it in, in Kosovo. They wanted to use it in, against the Russians in Chechnya. They even were talking about using the Muslim fundamentalists to, to cause trouble in China. So it's entirely opportunistic um, on their part, and they're prepared to, to use. You know, there's also they tried to establish uh, a Sunni militia sort of modeled after Al Qaeda in Lebanon to sort of, sort of counterbalance Hezbollah. So, you know, there's, uh, they're looking very short term and, and preparing to do almost anything without really considering the medium and long term interests. It's just it's a short term. How do we destabilize Libya? How do we create problems? How do we get rid of Gaddafi? Then they, you know, out of the chaos, assume they're going to try to have some sort of control and they've got their people in place. And, you know, the, the leading person is, is, in fact, the CIA asset. So I, I think it, it's, it's not really well thought out. I think it's opportunistic. And, you know, it's, it's creating problems. You know, the Americans start bombing people left, right, center. And I'm sure we're not getting near enough uh, information about the actual civilian casualties. Yet we're saying as soon as Gaddafi stops killing civilians, but, you know, it's a Western intervention. This is almost like a concocted, invented, you know, uprising against Gaddafi. Right. And I'm sure there was some discontent, but nothing to the degree that... Uh, uh, would uh, you know would would probably bring it about to uh, an uprising, and of course the Saudis hate Gaddafi because he was attacking them and criticizing them. Same thing with uh, with the UAE and Qatar and, and a few of the other feudal regimes that are supporting the Americans and, and also pushed through that uh, sort of uh, phony resolution at the at the Arab League, which was attacking Gaddafi. It was it was you know the, the feudal regimes I think are desperate. They're afraid of the the this liberalization, the so-called Arab Spring. But they're you know in Bahrain it's they would overthrow the regime if the Saudis are putting their troops in. I think the Saudis are very much afraid of the same problem. You know, they're a feudal regime. It's probably got one of the worst human rights records of any country in the world, and it's very authoritarian. And I think it, it also lacks legitimacy with the vast majority okay. of the Arabs in, in, the, in the Arabian Peninsula. Okay. So this is uh, the thank fear. you. Thank you very much, Edward Corrigan. We appreciate that. Journalist and political commentator.